what's hard to overstate now is what a foreign idea this was in Ames. We were going against the grain, so there was just automatically, for the most part, a lot of resistance. It felt overwhelming and I think just a little daunting about putting myself out there like that Mm -hmm. because it raises a lot of personal questions, a lot of defensiveness because the attitudes were so disbelieving that sexual assault was such an issue. I mean, we we didn't know what we were doing, right, which -hmm. which was fine (laughs) but because we just sort of launched ourselves into this and I would say that you don't know what you're doing doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. And I think that's what we were doing. And I think at times it just felt like there was very little support by way of just recognition that this was make sense. It was not a particularly welcoming discussion in most of Ames. It was just sort of the, the lack of any affirmation that became really difficult. When you say that there was resistance from the com- community or just anybody around Ames, what did you guys do to get past that? just tenaciously keep pushing. Where we did work is public awareness. We could always go to whatever the public broadcasting station was. And I remember doing a lot of media interviews just talking about sexual assault, talking about what we were trying to do, and that did help us generate a, a little bit more momentum to the extent that we had more victims coming forward to show that, I mean, we're not just sort of making this up. As it turns out, Mary Ellen Stone stayed with the field of sexual assault prevention, education, and victim advocacy. Today, she is the executive director of King County Sexual Assault Resource Center in Renton, Washington. And it's so interesting when you looked back at what was like critical things about your time with the Maniwa Rape Crisis Center was was partially that public awareness piece. And then yeah. here today, that's, that's one of the key tools that is a thread that is a 40-year thread. Sure. And if we can't talk about this, we have no hope of changing it. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to be able to make this absolute common part of everyday conversation. Mm-hmm. So that's where with with me too as this like big flash right now we are doing everything we can to take advantage of this moment in time because presumably that's not going to last but we're galvanizing a lot of public support and we're having conversations with business sectors that I wouldn't expect for example working with Alaska Airlines right now because they're headquartered here and they have programs on there or or messages on there in flight announcements saying if something's happening to you on the plane we want to hear from you we want you to tell us and that's been we've been involved with that level of conversation to really open this up in so many ways so i don't have the vision of what's going to happen over the next couple generations i i can't get myself there what i do want is for us to be able to be strong and influential for whatever the future is going to need